Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, welcome to another exciting propaganda cast from your host, Imperial Dane. We're off here to an exciting one versus one on Simwaski. We shall be watching here Keith Fleetman fighting for the Soviet Union for the Fifth Guards Rifle Corps going up against that Fiend of Fiends, Imperial Dane here fighting for Germany for the Reich. We have more conscripts at our disposal. Rolling out. For the Panzergrenadier Division Feldherrn Halle. Potentially reinforced with other elements. And we're noting here, well, basically standard stuff here. Two country on the way here for Keith Slutman. We're noting Commander's Assert Reserve. Been a bit of a while since we've seen that one. Shock Rifle and Lend Lease. That one we've seen before. A lot more long touch shock rifle. Commanders for me are Mobile Defense, Mechanized, and Mechanized Assault. Achtung! So pulling back here to Keith Flutman, who seems to be pulling back his combat engineers already having secured the initial fuel point. Fuel point there being secured, not quite swiftly. And then he's moving out here for Reich. All a bit quiet for the time being, and what could be he be up to within his own base departments? I wonder, I wonder. Setting up an early structure by the looks of him, he's noting an early special rifle command then for Keith Flutman. Country to the northwards. South perch bedding up there, nothing unusual there, gun on their hand will be a bit more focused on the left hand side. While the pioneers basically just sort of spread out the other way, dragging a bit there and also then essentially trying to figure out is it going to be sort of focusing towards the left hand side or will he also be having troops out there on the right hand side, which could be a bit helpful to know. Scout car then the next target here for Keys Flutman. The M three A one. And an MG42 arriving there for the Reich. Pioneers heading northwards. Conscripts and communists working together there southwards, so the larger part of his force will be there. Whereas the left hand side will be much weaker initially. And he's working together there, going to sort of head towards the fuel point there, hoping to initially secure that. Well, not the fuel point, now that's when some Oscar with the point here, anyways. Have an idea what's going on there. Secure the left hand side initially, then working my way towards other Not points. Right hand side, well, of course, there's something there is essentially well much less of a priority. Can't switch into the building there. Pioneer's going to pop out in the open. Beyond on between a lot of rifle there at the same time, can't caught. Scout car riding for Keys Flutman there. Pioneer's rapidly pulling back. And before to moving up here. And he's quick to drag some troops into the M3A1. Strafniki on the way here for Keith Lutman, by the way. And Gunner is flying away there. MG42 setting up. Setting up to support here. If you can catch the scout car, that would all be alright. That scout car is already on the move. He's being pretty aggressive here, in fact. And maybe they're going to catch with a Panzer Faust. And. There we go. Abandoned. MD4 sitting up here. There's one back towards the building. Scout car escaping. With the damage engine that can still be reasonably fast. We need to get out of there. Pioneers been forcing. Third grenade is arriving. Can't get suppressed. Going to see if they can't catch that scout car on the tree. But at the same time, we have a scout needy squad there moving in to support. And looks like the scout car will be able to escape. There you go, penal troops opening up, Canada is falling back. Country is taking quite a bit of damage, knowing he's actually heading straight towards the fuel point here with the Conscript Squad, hoping to disrupt my fuel initially. Not unusual. Country is taking a few shots in the treat, but we do see the penal troops moving up, flame for getting up, they going to need to fall back. So we fun later! Canada is moving out, and he's forcing up as well. Not be able to catch the penal troops here in an awful volley of bullets. And there we go. Rapidly beginning to bleed out there in the open. Grenadier is an MG42 unleashing death. So while I might be losing other parts of that, in fact, losing my fuel pump, which is actually a bit more unpleasant, I'm getting the rest, at least a more stronger fold on the left hand side. I've still got the victory point. And we're seeing here some irregulars arriving for Keith Slutman. And some troops pushing ahead lightly here to sort of make me knock out the Skark or at least do some harassment there against this fuel point in return. Though he's got most of his troops hanging around here as well, so that's not going to be quite as successful as one might have hoped. Squad 
Pioneers are going to be forced move going to move towards that fuel point. We are ready to build it or blow it. There are local partisans ready to join forces with us. Indy Forge sitting up with Glenys moving up to link up with the other squad. Front clip falling back. And Pioneers retreating as well. You need something built? And it comes to scorching up behind here, not that, not that. Time to keep the scout cover at bay, get that fuel point. Fed him a bit with rifle grenades or other things that could hot the occupants inside. And now he's actually sneak up all the way here, going maybe for the victory points in the nations. And it's taking also the scout yeah, and the, the LMG wielding irregulars going to be nasty on this man to render the point neutral for a bit. And they go like to make a nice we company up. The Full retreat there, and he is going for the victory point up and north, spreading out a bit aggressively. Here. You need something demolished? Men's again are much more intent at least in holding just a small amount of the territory, but at least holding a bit better so I can actually bleed him out a bit and then push forwards. Also rapidly putting up mines here for Keith Lutman. Always good to see you unless you're the German player, which of course you might not like it so much. Going to see was not paying attention, so they got caught up with the conscripts out in the open. And then up to quite a bit of damage as a result. Scout car running here though, might rapidly be upgraded with the 222. MD42 falling back here, realizing that could end up being lost if I'm not careful. Map control will drastically and rapidly falling out of hands. You need something built? Entry scout car rolling around. Marking, marking oh well, scout cars are rolling around. No engagement here, Glenys this time having much better chance. Again, fuel point has been in a neutral. Structure complete. Another mine up there for Keith Slootman. Scout car doing can, auto cannon unleashing hell, Glenys moving up support. Bit of a charge for there, scout car taking damage, Glenys moving in. Hands pass could be unleashed, but then again, maybe not. Scout card down, anti tank grenade, maybe unleashed. There we go, anti tank grenade on the 222. Two flashing forward, Strafniki and other things. MD42 sending up support here. Close quarters there with the auto cannon, could be rather unpleasant there for the Russians. Scout card does go down, but the Strafniki themselves have taken heavy losses. There we go, a full retreat there for Keys Flutman. Only a single control squad there holding the line. There's more and more troops being pulled back into the fight, and we're noting a Panzer Gunner Squad also arriving here to fight for Germany. The small Gunner Squad a bit more than shown, but with the light machine gun thus increasing its chances of survival a bit more in that department and pushing forwards again aggressively. We are losing supplies to the enemy. More mines going up here for Keys, he's not gaming up there. Yes, Another scout car on the way, by the way, he seems fond of those. And another mine there finished. New units have arrived. Point there secured. M three A one moving up. Pioneers moving up to secure the points and regain some munitions. So the so army is the name of the game. It would seem. Sticking up here close, avoiding the road a bit, thinking he might have mined it. Not unusual to see mines there, obviously. Time to shoot some German. Kennedy's got me only holding up things there. Submachine guns now being handed out in larger numbers to Keys Flutman's troops. The enemy has taken our supply sector. Kennedy's advancing about a bit cautiously. And mine went off there, wiping out half the Grenadier squad in the process. Quite pleasant, but at least it didn't lose the entire unit. And there goes Scott coming in against Grenadiers. Taking up position in the house to limit the effect of the machine guns. Machine gun and actually increasing a bit of damage there versus it. Albeit rather lightly. Units moving up there, Panzer is hitting a mine to try to maneuver out of there. Losing almost the entire squad, leaving behind only our Grenadier squad, which is also forced to fall back. Ready. More shot machine guns for Keith Flutman. Pack here arriving to help deal for some of the scout car, but also any further armor he might get. MG42 and Top Patrol need to fall back and once more pushed off the field. Not due to the mines in this case. Your command? M3 scout car here. Comrade. 
And it is reinforcing. Soldiers ready. Rapidly rebuilding for Germany. Pani is holding up here a bit on their own and with that rather outgunned in this department need to fall back again. 40 here ready to cover. Pushing about there. Conscripts ready and willing. The PPS H's have arrived. You have done what you were told. Good. Good work, comrades. This now belongs to us. Waiting for your command. A bit quiet. Make a nice armor company up there for Keith Flutman. Scout car there being used to take points. Your orders, comrade. Troops are reinforcing. And a larger gun of escort or force with several light machine guns pushing northwards here ready to punish the communists no for their crimes against the Reich. Popping over to the Germans. Now you're going to quickly force to fall back there, or conscious force to fall back. Flame flow stuff in the building. Seeing and range in at basically the sides with the less windows. There goes Yankee charging forwards, falling a bit back here as a larger assault goes in, then you pull to the firing. Stuffing up one part of the advance, plans goes holding up here. Stuff Nigo having having suffered quite a bit out in the open. Daniel's suffering quite a few losses there from the anti tank. And there we have going off. Comes there, forced to fall away. One assault finally repelled a bit better there, thanks to no mines interfering. This is firepower of the Reich. Knowing here, mobile defense has been chosen. Partly due to the fuel pressure, I rather feel like at least going to need something a bit mobile in terms of armament. Defense, in which case the Puma can help a bit. But there you go, arriving, moving up, going for the fuel point again. He's definitely able to keep up the pressure quite nicely there. Point is guilt when it's moving up. Further step is a defense. Yeah. A bit hey, cautiously. And rolling back the pack here, hoping to maybe catch the scout car and knock out the occupants as well. Snipers arriving here for Keith Slootman. The sector has been cut off. Pioneer sneaking up, sneaking up. Minesweeper would be good, but munitions are a bit lacking in that department due to all the machine guns being handed out. Ostrom reserves are a possibility, would help quickly build up numbers. And an HSM-6 arrives for Keith Flutman. Sniper comes up there, gets one Pioneer. Another option could be a Granatenwerfer, for a mortar. Of course, another pack or Panzer Grenadiers, or just taking up Colosby, an option with a few cash, maybe. There's certainly a few options only to go for, that should not be denied. Panzer is holding up, trying my best to sort of pull much to the corner here. So it's going to be harder for the sniper to catch him. Flares up, by the way, there from the sniper. Setting up for an all-mean assault here, conscious of the nation's intimate support. And another mine went off there, killing the remaining Pioneers, or Pioneer. That's what it remains here. Scout can hang about there. Hunter are going to deal with the can from here. Big rifle grenade does no real kills. They go using the building to close in, but sadly, this conscript has spotted them, rather ruining the surprise. And before you come, the cheap pants goes strength. Desperately to escape the village, swarming with the Russians, quite angry and upset. Oh, there's a call, we know how bows going in here from this in 6 with the MD-42. And a rapid force here deployed, mobilizing the Ostrogen reserves and calling in a Granatenwerf as well. To shore up the increasingly crumbling defenses, and give me some kind of numbers. Plus the mortar would help a bit against snipers in the infantry. Large Russian forces bouncing down the main street here. That machine gun assuming that they ultimately not enough. And Pack here was home to catch the scout cover. He's already rapidly moving away there from the side. And these are mass Ostrom as well. Bit of light gunning going on there. Yeah. And a Puma called in to aid. I suppose you need cannon fodder. Ah, 
Handy. Back forty cuts down to be moved forwards again once more. I suppose you have all our lines of supply are disrupted. Big two points back for the down, attacking. back pushing almost down there, so something up to the nearby edge first. Empty uh, yes. Snarber killing an Ostrom, not going to do so much. Puma for some reason taking a very bad route, and Fat had ordered to take up him for some reason and decided to take the other route. And then Salt Nax the Puma taking a lot of unnecessary damage plus getting hit with anti-tank grenades, ultimately resulting in the loss of a Puma. So I'm not entirely sure what had happened there to be quite honest. Incoming fire. Ostrom needs to fall back. Almost getting the sport lost there. Almost getting the sniper. Actually getting the sniper there. Wiping up there with that machine gun. Mining gate trying to take a mine. Heavy losses forced back. We have secured the sector. We are losing the sector. These Ostrom can also do with going back. Another issue six arriving. The enemy has dealt us a blow. Still the loss of a sniper to keep the man will hurt. The enemy is gaining the foothold. We are down to Pack 40 moving up, hoping to use the gun. It is a bit of a bait then, having the Pack 40 knock out some of the assault guns. Panzer is running, hitting with the combat engineers. But they're now actually taking some losses to the flamethrowers. For some reason, not quite having any sort of assault luck. Much to my frustration. But ultimately, managed to push them away. Second Puma arrives. The Nazi is for finding support. Panzer Gunners need to fall back. Noting here, by the way, the right hand side is very open. He's focusing pretty much everything up here, which is certainly to allow me to concentrate my defenses a bit better. MD42 covering the right support. flank, though, and the advance through the village will certainly be a lot more difficult. And there goes using the Puma to flank while the pack then fires the support here. Sadly, the issue takes you can actually turn rather fast, faster than the pan and the Puma can advance. Bit of a surprise there, to be fair. Got one issue 76, though, but loss is well rather high with that. And the Puma is actually a bit more expensive, but still, it's a price of that. MG42 firing. And we are seeing a rapid conscription up. I've rarely used the village, but there we go. Allows him to sort of consolidate some of his losses. Oh, some squad here was not reinforced, but apparently pushed forwards nonetheless. Panzer Grenadier reinforcing. And there you go, the Stunaf Niki moving out into the open, coming in high there for more increasing numbers of Lapsing and Ostrom firing as well. Getting a few kills there. Balance going in for Mr. Six walks to sit in the center. Then he's inside the church, delivering a sermon of lead and fury. And then before to holding on another part of the assault. Heavy loss then Victor on the Grand Conscripts there and looks like some squad will be replaced. Guns need to fall back on the church. Zurückfallen. Bloody close there. And by the looks of it, a few counter squads there. Put together. But Ostrom here could quickly get doing, and also a quick use of counterattack tactics could also be helpful in gaining back some ground rapidly. Territory secured. I suppose you have orders. Pack loaded for Panther. Order team awaiting orders. Grenadiers reporting objective capture. Einsatzbereit. Scout car sneaking about. Granati now for setting up at a reasonably front foot position where it can support. Take out the MD4 chain, any arm fishing guns could also be an option right now. Which will increase the damage. And there you go, Contra is getting torn to bits. In the middle of the village street with another Ostrom squad here on a flank mission. Less than, well, less likely to get deeply torn apart by feelings of distress and sadness if lost. You are expendable in the name of Germany. It's largely the thought there. Another Schwerer Panzer Spielwagen could be in the dance, maybe. There we go, the Ostropen. Eastern volunteers in some cases, in other cases not. So, the description here says they're from the West Front, but technically they were actually sent to the West Front because they were deemed unreliable on the Eastern Front. And in most cases, they didn't get back, and certainly not the ones with experience. 
experience because, well, you know, they tended to rather quickly surrender to the Americans, in which case the Americans were pretty quick to hand them over to Stalin, and, well, you didn't hear much about them afterwards. So just a slight comment in that department. Bit of Gunnart and Never Fire here, hoping to catch those Russians. And we fail Panzer Wagner arriving. To help deal with some of all this infantry and give me at least an edge there. But an issue 85 here arriving for Key Slutman, perhaps realizing he needs something a bit bigger versus more armored nasties. Setting up for another assault here by the looks of it. And catching the snipers in the back, he's getting more snipers, it would seem, than Mr. Key Slutman. Popping over here to his perspective once more. Panzer is holding up the edge there of the cemetery. A quick bomb grenade in hopes of catching them. And, well, I only killed one, but left the others a bit burned up. And up in the north, the Panzer fall to deliver death and swift destruction. With high explosive shells there, crippling a part of Keystone's more than infantry force here. Meanwhile, another assault going into the center. Pop of the gun at the ears. A bit harder here for anything to support them at the same time. Another sword going in here, Lightship Crunch moving in, and before two also turning them up. Panzer was doing what it came back to the advantage, Crunch really doing alright, but ultimately overwhelmed. Then he is also being pushed away. Panzer Vought Command Tank needs to rush back in at the same time, we are seeing a push over the fuel point. A rather large assault going in here from Keith Bootman, MD4 Taylor, fine, stopping them up, active point blank, veteran 2, suppressing them rapidly, causing heavy losses to be inflicted upon Keith Bootman's unfortunate conscripts. And there we go, another squad pushing forwards, but coming under fire here from the Panzer IV. Getting the MG42 crew, though, rather wiping out that bit of veteran team, rather unfortunate for me, but not for him. Advancing here, Ostrom quick to recruit a Panzer Abwehr Kanone in service of Zreich and gun away at those. There we go, nice hit there, mortar crew also cleared out. Main gun wrecked, but AC-76 still functional. Constantine to his force, but are under quite a bit of fire. We know he's now on the way, noting he's already got one squad, and also knowing he's got five Constantine squad and a bunch of other things. I oh, will down to four. The losses were aggressive, and a common squad caught down there, but the grenades on retreat. Counter attack tactics, by the way, now active. And again, note it's a bit slow there in terms of taking it, but once you've activated neutral, it goes a lot faster. So it does have its advantages. We do note here that Keith Bootman is rapidly pulling back his units. And so he also helped me quickly get back that fuel point again. Panzer IV currently a bit of a linchpin over the defences. Partly because we need to provide some defensive bonus, but also we can rather quickly tear through any infantry that might have the wrong idea. And there goes Kalka finally went down. Almost wiping out the regulars in the process. H85 counterattacks with a few snipers and other things in tow. But at the same time, an infantry counterattack is led in. But two snipers here will quickly put a stop to anything there. Trying to catch some of those snipers, but a bit much. Recruiting the MG42 as well. Never a bad idea. Supply sector under attack. So slowly but surely getting back on the field, slowly but surely also establishing a bit more of a stalwart defence, worthy of Germany. And certainly Keith Spootman is then beginning to run a bit more out of impetus, a bit more out of punch. And particularly with the snipers, he was certainly not the sort of thing you want for rapid assault, he's definitely slowing down his tempo. Which to a certain extent also gives me a bit more time to react. A few things that could be considered would be some S mine fields here and there to sort of slow down his inventory. Reinforcing. Our territory is falling into enemy hands. Ready Snipers. Stravniki Ostrom score getting caught out in the open. Quick sniper kill there. And recruiting some mortars. A granat in there. 
Not being a bit careful of the Panzer IV. I'm not entirely sure where his tank store is in the assault gun side, so I don't want to put my Panzer IV a bit too much and get it wrecked. But time for the mid-game analysis. Current situation, I've sort of got more than 50% of the map right now. I'm actually beginning to sort of stiffen up the defences. Partly because I've also been able to call in the Ostrom or Surge, but also the Molten is only establishing a bit more of a strong point. Getting back some of those victory points I have lost. And I've got a bit of armor that can actually punish this large infantry component force. So that rather helps as well. So of course now question is around sort of to a certain extent, you know, establish a stronger defense in that department. S mines at the right spots could definitely strengthen up things a lot. More in particular since currently doesn't have any combat engineers and so no mine sweepers that could easily tear up a bunch of his infantry. Bankers in the right positions could also help for example here in the village. Those would actually be quite helpful if they were forced to try to have to send in the stuff need to clear them out or somehow sneak in the assault guns, which if correctly placed the bunker could force him into some line of fire, say a pack forty or something else. So that is one option, of course, getting some more Pumas could also be an idea to then try and sort of outmaneuver the assault guns and that way catch them from the sides and knock them out. Another possibility would be taking up getting Panzer IV Stukes or even taking further up and aiming for a Panther. That would be the more expensive solution, but in the end it could probably work out quite nicely, but again it would require an awful lot of resource investment, so it has its pros and its cons. I mean advantages and disadvantages, but since so with the Pumas as well, since they are a bit vulnerable to, you know, extended fire. So that would also be something to keep in mind. But otherwise, bunkers, command bunkers, maybe some MG bunkers in the right places. And of course, further Ostrom will serve if things get a bit hot. Because again, then I can further extend the front line and again have something that can sort of act as a bit of a decoy. My defense in part basically relying on having small outposts of units and then having a large reserve that can then react to what's going on as the string can actually react to say an attack here or here or here with some speed and alacrity. And also ensure he doesn't can immediately make one strike, for example, the sniper's causing huge losses with my force. Plus, if they're in reserve, I can then, to a certain extent, use the terrain to maneuver around to counterattack his attack. For example, you know, if he attacks here, I could sneak up something here, hit him from the side, as an example. So that's a bit of part of my defense for... Whoops. Key's flute man, though. I mean, he's got a sort of mixed force here, but at the same time he's now sort of trying to bash his way here through this part again. He's realized this is this schwer point of my efforts, if you will. The strong point, this is essentially where most of my units are, and again where most of my support units are. This is basically where he wants to break through, and it tends to be a sort of the natural assumption for a lot of players. They just want to sort of bash their way through, and he's trying to get snipers out to that way, sort of basically cause a wall of attrition, assault guns, tank destroyers, all that. To that extent, he's sort of leaving his flanks open. He needs to sort of leave something out here, maybe some irregular, some mines, something sort of leave it a bit less weak. Otherwise, that's something that could fall against him. And he might also want to consider either some motion sixes, a Katusha, or some more sort of assault infantry, even aiming for some armor, some tanks could sort of help, you know, exploit a break in the defenses. Because currently it's going to be a rather slow sort of affair from now, the way he settled in with his infantry and support units. So that is actually something valuable to keep in mind as well. But let us return to the fight. There you go, Schwerer Panzer Spielwagen arriving. And Mortier basically firing in the hopes of catching some of the snipers. Usually one tactic you can use. You know your opponent for some has snipers in a certain area, bombard it and hope to catch them that way, at least keep them away. The and then they... Puma for some reason running into the house there. Good job, Helmut. Thank you! Minesweeper's up by the way there, taking no chances with further mines. Irregulars moving up. And looks like he's setting up an attack there. Larger infantry force holding up here. But again, note it's not right away, it's sort of more so I can draw him in and then counter attack. And also a bit spread out. And there you go, the stuff needs to run straight into the lap machine gun force away. Ooh, rowing out of there. With another small infantry force being dispatched here, Pioneers and Mines, Pius Grenades with a machine gun and an Ostropin squad. Soldiers Bit of firepower ready. being brought up there. And there we go, cuts from up there, taking a bit of fire there from the light machine guns and the Ostropin. The Ostropin with four kills. Look, comrades, a camarade, I mean, we are heroes of Deutschland. 
And sneak up from Pam's going to say it's sort of ensure he can't see them, or at least I think so. Indeed, noting here, he can't see them, so that way I hope Talor's troops enter sort of line of sight of the Panzer Grenadiers that be easy without exposing them, though in this case the flare rather messes that up. Sneaky bastard. Sneaky bastard. Also, I'm taking up position there, and he's moving up, then following up here. Caught on the other side of the cover. Can he getting sniped? Panzer are forming up to hold things up. He's interested enough not moving up assault guns to tanks for support here. Your orders, comrade. Conscious that were to take some last losses here in the face of the lines. We also know the regulars actually here sort of forming a bit more of a base of fire with a DP light machine guns. Panzers though continuing to hide here, though he probably knows now they're there. Assault guns tanks are moving up as well, using a barrage going off. With a second H-85 tank to moving in, to a certain extent of course, knowing they're there, that would actually force them to be a lot more careful with the armor, and of course aim for something else, which of course would then sort of place more pressure to allow snipes and other things to do nasty things. Pushing across here, gonna dispatch the three, quick life grenade there, nice bit of damage, tank through the troops head trying to cross, motor going off, of course also finding to fortify there from the farmhouse. And Mortify here. Sort of trying to get to keep the snipers a bit at bay. Another flare off. I mean, he's trying to sort of ensure he doesn't walk into an ambush. I mean, that's some clever stuff there. Certainly some competent tactics. Nothing wrong in that. In fact, most players don't use them like that, but that's actually a good idea. I mean, he knows I'm a crafty bastard who likes to use the terrain, so sharp thinking there. I mean, he doesn't want any sort of prizes from, say, a hidden reserve, which is, you know quite sensible, in fact more than most of my opponents actually do, so I mean a thumbs up there. Puma somehow managed to kill there. The same guy who drove into the house then managed to shoot through a series of trees and hit someone in a ditch. What are the odds? A Puma there forcing, oh, H-85's forcing back the Panzer IV. Tech 40 moving up here. And there go Puma actually managed to force back them. He's a bit worried there, pulls back through the Puma's presence. But at the same time, the right hand side is being secured. S mines here could be quite handful, helpful. Noting, by the way, a ton of munitions. So mines would definitely not be a bad idea. We know this stuff needs to be moving up here. Panzer is hiding. By the way, they're still in the same text as the Panzer IV. So they actually get some defensive bonuses. And there we go. Panzer is taking through them. Panzer is moving as well. But again, the Panzers will be a lot harder to deal with. Again, due to the defensive bonuses. And can thus absorb a lot more fire, but ultimately they still take up a lot of damage, and the snipers ultimately tear through them. The, the defensive bonus doing nothing support. against that. Tragically. Still cost him some quite a bit of bleeding and noting he's getting a third sniper team out. And okay, they really hope to drain through me. Gonna there's an Ostrom in the house still remaining here. Bit of a shame I did not get some S mines here. In fact, a bit of a massive mistake. Still sending my defenses around here. Again, he's basically got most of his stuff here, so he needs to be able to repel that in some manner. Second Puma arriving. Drawing the fire with the S Ostrom, calling the pack 40 up into fire away. Pack 40 crew getting blasted though. Need to fall back. And the Panzer IV still needs repairs, but the Pioneers are apparently elsewhere. Pulling back though. The line still holds though. Constant moving in there and looks like he's setting up the attack to hit the retreat path. Not a bad idea, by the way. And I, in fact, had not expected that. She actually gets able to wipe out the entire gun of the escort with the with three conscripts, in particular because for some reason they stop up right there. A bit of a bug, which ultimately gives you a bit of an advantage. And there we go, gun escort wiped out. Oscar, the only thing left behind. They do get up a few more kills. Almost getting veterans in the process. But ultimately forced to fall back. And unlike the Grenadiers, they don't get stuck, which ultimately ensures their survival. 
Finally getting something to repair that. Again lining up for something here, more to continue to fire. And that's catching some sniper bastards. Once more to cruise the pack, so plant up the canon it, and the squad of Panzer Grenadier. And cleared out there with the snipers. But again, it also pretty much ensures that near assault he has really can't take advantage of it very quickly. Which does ultimately give me some time to react. HMG here. Hands of all almost repaired. Actually sending in the snipers into the village. Quickly saying for the gun is hiding inside the church. Ready as will ever be. The last man making a very spirited run for it. And you seen the others comrex they are getting snuck up pretty rapidly. And we're seeing a full assault going into the village centre. Panzer Command Commanding will have to rush in to clear that out. While Pioneers attempting to set up some S mines, about time by the way. Not good though, as sadly not quite in good positions. They're going before two stone that part of the assault is up to the church, although the church is won't just collapse any moment. That's a bit of a bold maneuver. The nade going off there, killing only one occupant. And there go, Pavir's bunch wagon arriving. And one hell of a shot there wiping out most of the conscripts in the names of right. Puma or mortar and Puma firing at the conscripts doing a bit of damage. And for continues its ride of death into the village. Spotting the squad there of Fino troops and firing away that fight heading. Counter attack tactics going up. MD4 to find this now, knowing all of them have rather closed up. Bunched up. Kuma's pulling up here. Getting a bit aggressive and actually trying to try and charge in after the snipers. Maybe seeing the Kumas as the Panzer for them takes the shots. But no. Popping smoke instead. Due to being in the same sector though, again, it takes less damage. Panzer's moving up there. Will ever be. And another brave host from squad moving up here to secure some territory on the right hand side. And again, thanks to counter attack tactic, I essentially minimize the exposure I have here to sort of being shot out in the open. By showing I don't have to hang around much in the neutral point. Which is never a bad thing. So getting all four victory points. Small conscripts walking up. By the way, popping smoke there just in case because it could still be a target there for the snipers, so smoke would uh, most assuredly help with that. We need some a third puma could also be an idea. And again, so could teching up. Contact Using the pioneers, by the way, because I'm worried about mines in the road, so I can actually sort of move that across. Bit of a book, dumb maneuver there in fact, probably because the cheaters now is that so well. Crunch that almost wiped out. But at the same time I know where the snipers now are. In fact they're moving closer. Puma moving north across here. Trying to outmaneuver the assault guns and as that happens, moving in the Panther 4 from the south. As everything is occupied with the Pumas. And the Panther 4 misses that close. Good job there, Helmut. Popping smoke could be an idea, but no, for some reason it's like not for it. Puma gets the AC-76, small victory there. And smoke nature to cover the retreat. Got one sniper squad, another sniper, but not two sniper squads, which is rather what I was hoping for. Still did some damage there and rattled his cage, if you will. One very brave Ostrom there holding on despite having barely any health left. And somehow, well, and they're not quite holding through. Panzer's here versus the Ravniki. Mortify there, really taking out a chunk there. And I've actually three penal troops squad there, wiped out here for four keys. Grenade going off there, Panzer's squad there could get wiped out in the process. 
Oh, it's gonna be a fighting at Oakley, by the way, knowing these other score is Veteran T3. For the third boom on the way. I suppose you need cannons, and the regulars push back here, Keith Spookman having taken quite a bit of losses there. Scout car awaiting orders. Ready for anything. S mines here would be good. I suppose you have and there we go. Blown up. The S mine and Sprang mine in all bouncing mines. Quite a nasty little invention. Standing by. Roger the Panzer is caught here by the HD fires. By the way, noting the Puma up here in case he falls here with his tank stores. I could then drive it up behind them and do some nasty things there with it. And note, by the way, tracking on oh, focus sight on all of his tank destroyers. Again, the three snipers. He apparently replaced the other losses again, which means less infantry further to push forwards with. And noting the Puma's basically being spaced up that that again in the hopes, you know, how he moves, I can envelop his tank destroyers and assault guns because I realize he keeps them close together. So if even one can get behind them, he'll be in a lot of trouble. Airsman's going up here as well. I mean got a ton of munition, so might as well use it to make things miserable for my opponent. In particular, since he doesn't have any engineers to clear out. In fact, due to the commander, he can repair, but again, he can't clear mine. He can't skip. And there we go. Minefield there going off in their faces. And once more counter attack tactics to sort of speed things up a bit. Large sniper team moving up. 222. Grenadiers. And Puma Fangen revealing again, it's just not really effective otherwise. And again, I'm only really using the Puma because well, I can't really afford anything else, I just need something to deal with the assault guns, in which case the Puma will do alright, but otherwise I would not be using it. But there we go, pushing in. Getting up here behind the tank, so we make one. Lost one Puma, but again behind them. Going to Mungan, kick it off an anti-tank grenade, target weak point by the way available. Sadly gets wrecked before that is possible. There you go, one tank slow down. Rather expensive though. In the end, all Pumas lost. So again, not even that effective. Not fast enough for that matter. Still got one tank destroyer, forcing them a bit back there again. And quickly replaced with another, though still should consider something a bit less explodey in the longer run. Grenadiers, enemy forces are securing our territory. We are ready for action. That's it. Fire in first. Points are beginning to really tick against Mr. Keys Flutman, popping over to him. He's also got a ton of units though. And another Ostrom or Surf Force calling on this time with a light machine gun in tow. I'm a lightest machine in gear. Another flare here. And noting he's finally got some minesweepers up. Snipers there going through the pans of grenadiers. Quickly sending them running. Another minefield going up there. Of course, got the multi firing energetically in service of Germany. And the pioneers have cleared out. Sprinting over the snipes it can sprint away with. Rifleman ready. You are showing weakness. We are down to 75 points. Another Puma. The point is ours. There again, he's now beginning to pour much more into the infantry behind the direction. assault guns and tank destroyers. Oh, never mind, he's getting another tank destroyer. AT gun has a range! Squad standing by! One of some squad northwards, back for here getting rushed by the conscripts. Puma and an MP42 crewed by another Ostrom squad. That is a fight here. New cut with damage it's constant advanced snipers also moving up. And a more stalwart defense in there you go. Irregular squad wiped out. Con squad flanking in here. 
Mark Sarge forced to beat two Glenn Escort Flying Machine Guns, taking these current skips. Lots of some Machine Guns, by the way, but again, only works when you get close to the multiple on the Grenadiers. Five from eight going off as well. And forced to retreat right through all the fire he just popped on me. And yes, my field as well. Resorting heavy losses, wiping out one of my Grenadiers. What's in the process? Rather unfortunate there. Still a full retreat right there. With another elite Ostroben squad making an elite Ostroben move towards the right hand side. To go for that victory point home to drain him out of them, to be quite frank. With another squad remaining over here, basically acting as a defense point. With a light machine gun, they managed to somehow snag out someone. Since generally they were not that well equipped. Well, maybe one out of, I don't know, a platoon might have one. Fresh meat has arrived. But there we go, just in case even mined up there, but so far none of that. So the Ostrom basically taking a very long Securitas route Enemy forces for uh, no good reason. Bit of quiet here. There's lots of snows moving in there. Conscripts also en masse with the combination with the Minesweeper. And setting an S minefield there again should have probably done that a lot earlier. In fact, I've got a ton of munitions, which is quite frankly a bit sad. Of course, now we hit the Ostrom, Ostrom quick to retreat. Counter attack tactics also allowing me to cure it before they suffered too heavily. Then again, they're freezing up for some reason. Pushing into the village centre here, Ostrom holding up the buildings, acting as a bit of a cornerstone there, also basically acting as something to draw the fire. Tank destroyers and nothing else to support the centre in the village push. Points continue taking down. He apparently seemed to have forgotten the victory point, throwing all of his snipers over there. A bit of a mistake there for Keith Flutman as that only increases the drain. Bunker going up in the centre, snipers continue to snipe away. Pans goes forced to fall back. And there go large flanking assault going in, just really pushing in. But there's a small surprise waiting for him there. But the drain is increasing, he can't afford not to do it. And the Ura turns into a bit of an ooh shit, it's hit the full force of the minefield. And there we go, game over. Rather brutal battle of attrition here, some mobile defences going on. Pumas, Panzer Force, lots of assault guns and tank destroyers, snipers en masse. Nasty match overall, in fact. But overall for some clever defences. Victory prevailed, I could have done some better Puma tactics I suppose, but then it required me to have a bit of a clear idea of his tank destroyers and such, although at the same time an option could have been driving up here, but... And of course I could also basically just not gotten all those Pumas and try to instead aim for some armor like a panther that might also have had an effect, though that would certainly have been a bit more risky in some other regards, and turn required a lot more time in teching. Bunkers, but also just lacking in mind, so it's definitely one of my large mistakes this match. You could easily have done with a lot more S-Mines early on and drained the life out of him much faster. The Ostrom Reserve turned out to be quite a small blessing in disguise. They actually killed a bit, but also just allowed me to sort of send more expendable troops out to try the tech fire, so drain points to just basically act as something to be shot at, allowing the other units to shoot, or shoot back at it. So that was not bad either. The mortar are also proving to be, well, mildly helpful in this case, but not massively. His Putman sort of did alright initially, but then he sort of petered out and he began getting too many snipers right on the ultimately sort of limited how much he could actually push forward, in particular when he also relied heavily on tank destroyers. He essentially was much, much too reliant on his conscripts to then push the assault, and once they focused down, he was sort of well out of things to actually push through with, which was sort of the essential problem. So maybe some tanks in the longer run could also have helped him just a bit, to be fair. Otherwise, other things I could consider maybe could have been in some MG bunkers or another MG fighter, or maybe in another mortar here and there. But there you go. I hope you enjoyed this match. I hope you learned something from it. If you did, why not subscribe, tell your friends, share it with everyone. And of course, if you didn't, you know, send in a replay and provide some feedback in the comments. This is Imperial Dane saying cheers, and also feel free to follow me on Facebook or Twitter. Links are in the description. This is Imperial Dane wishing you all a good day.